All right, in 37, we have an international polling agency that estimates that 36% of adults from country X were first married between the ages of 18 and 32, and 26% of adults from country Y were first married between the ages of 18 and 32. Based on these estimates, which of the following is closest to the probability that the difference in proportion between a random sample of 60 adults from country X and a random sample of 50 adults from country Y, country X minus country Y, who were first married between the ages of 18 and 32 is greater than 0.15. Okay, so um, let's write some stuff out. So we have two um, groups here. Let's call them, um, let's just have this. We have the proportion of the proportion of actually what am I actually let me get let me just first show you guys this so that you know where this is coming from so we're we're essentially looking for um the difference in proportion being greater than you know some probability value but we want to know what we're talking about like what would a uh, which of these we're going to be looking at so you can see here we have two population proportions, or in this case, sample proportions. And so we're going to basically be using the info in this row here, because we're looking at a difference in proportions. So let's just have P, let's have um, two sample proportions. Um, Px is 0.36. And P Y hat 0.26. And the sample sizes. Um, so N, the sample size of sample X, and X would be 60, and N sub Y would be 50, it looks. And we're trying to find what's the, what's the probability that P sub X minus P sub Y, the difference in those proportions, country X minus country Y is greater than 0.15. So we're trying to find this probability. So what we're gonna look is at a difference in proportions. So we're gonna make D equal to, equal to P sub X minus P sub Y. And then we're going to look at this. Well, let's actually let's put p hat because we're looking at samples. And then we're going to look at find. We're going to basically just find the probability of d being more than 0.15. Yeah, you get me? Probability of the difference being more than 0.15. So what we want to do is find the um, mean of d. What would the mean of d be? And the standard deviation of d. So the mean of D is just the mean of X minus the mean of Y, which would just be 0.36 minus 0.26, which would be 0.1. And the standard deviation of D, we would use this equation here. P one hat times one minus P one hat over N one plus P two hat times one minus P two hat over N two. So we're gonna use this. Let's write this out. So this would be the square root of 0.36 times one minus 0.36 or 0.64 over 60 plus 0.26 times one minus 0.26 or 0.74 over 50. And let's make sure that let me break this up in my calculator. Mm -hmm. 0.26 times 0.74 divided by 50 plus 0 0.00384 raised to square rooted. So I'm going to get but, but 0 0.0876. 0 0.0876. This is my standard deviation. Okay, so what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking at this distribution of the of the diff of the difference d 
where the mean is 0.1 and the standard deviation is 0.8768 about. I want to find the probability that D is greater than 0.15. So since this is 0 0.1, 0 0.15 will be somewhere over here probably. I want to find the area to the right. That's my goal. So I can just now use technology. I'm using a calculator, all right. I'm going to go to my distribution function. I'm going to go to normal CDF function. Lower bound would be to 0.15. The upper bound would be like a billion or a zillion. Whoa, whoa, don't forget the comma. These old school calculators. And the next comma mean, the mean, 0.1, followed by the standard deviation, 0.08768. Bang, point, and we will get 0.28-ish about, 0.284. And so our answer is undoubtedly B. All right. Only three more to go. All right, consumer group wants to investigate the relationship between the number of item, items purchased at a single visit at, to a local grocery store and the total cost of the items purchased. The group obtained a random sample of 11 receipts from the store and recorded the total number of items and the total cost from each receipt. The computer output of an analysis of total cost versus number of items purchased is shown in this table. So here's our data. Assume all conditions for inference were met based on the results shown in the table. Which of the following is a 95% competent interval for the average change in total cost for each increase of one item purchased? Okay, so, we're trying to basically estimate, if we look, average change, or basically like slope, because remember, slope tells you the rate, the rate of change. So make sure that, again, we know how to, we know um, how to interpret this. This will be uh, what we're going to, our point estimate, what we're going to start with. So let's me write the form in general though. We have this type of interval, our B plus minus our T star times the standard error of B. Point estimate plus a critical value times the standard deviation or an estimate of the standard deviation. Let me crank out my formula sheet so you can see, but I don't think this is really given explicitly there. So if you remember earlier, probably when, when you learned about regression, you had, you know, this equation, but other than that, you're not gonna have much more to go off of that other than this, so let's see. Yeah, nothing really. This is where we're estimating slope. Okay, now, so where do we go from here? Well, our B, our point estimate, that's just 2.784, because again, this is the number of items, this is the intercept, Plus our plus minus our T star. So that's gonna be our critical value for a 95% confidence interval with degrees of freedom. Remember, we need a degrees of freedom value. And let's look at our we already need to look at our sample sizes is 11. Degrees of freedom is our sample size minus two. So in this case, it's 11 minus two, so it's gonna be nine. So our T star, use your formula sheet. We're gonna look at our table with D, with our T star, this guy. And down here we have the confidence levels or intervals, you can think of them, well, pretty similar. 95%, go up this column and look for the intersection with nine degrees of freedom. I'll be right here, there's your guy, 2.262. So our T star is 2.262. So we put that now as in our equation or in our expression, 2.262. And now our standard error for the sample slope B. So we want to now look what do we have to what do we have to um which of these values would that be? Again, this is just really making sure you know how to interpret this stuff. And it would be this because, again, we're looking at this row. We're looking at the standard error for the estimate of the slope. So this would be 
2265. And so on 38, this would be, the answer would be B. Now, just so you know, um, there's not many problems on this dealing with these topics. So if you're like, if you're like worried, oh my God, how am I going to cover this? Because it's kind of in its own chapter. Um, I know it's, a lot, it's in the last chapter of the course I teach. And there's really usually only like one or two multiple choice and like never really any free response. Anyways, I wouldn't stress out too much about it because um, it's really um, not something you should focus on if you're strapped for time. But I hope that helps. Good luck.